Hi, my name is Danielle Matus here at Caring Medical Florida, and I'm sharing with you today a, a case on shoulder instability. And this might actually be the most unstable shoulder I've seen in the office. This was a 56-year-old female, very active in the horse community, riding horses, training horses, etc. So you can imagine how much strain is on her shoulder doing that. When shoulders are unstable, we have to think of the ligaments, right? The ligaments are the rubber bands that help hold all of our joints together. So in the shoulder, which is actually the most mobile joint in the body, we have a lot of ligaments, a capsule of ligaments that help hold that ball and socket together. So if we look here, just kind of at the core of the joint, here's the ball, here's the socket, there's a labrum, which is kind of like a thick ring of tissue that helps to suction the ball into that socket. And then on top of all of that is you have all of these ligaments, right? This whole capsule of rubber bands that tries to anchor everything and hold it together. When those ligaments get injured or stretched out, that's when someone can have shoulder instability, okay? So in this patient's case, she actually had a history of a labral and rotator cuff surgery years ago. What was happening more recently was her shoulder was dislocating. It was actually falling out of place and she would either have to go to the ER or kind of like learn to put it back into place on her own. Her recent MRI showed history of you know a previous surgery but really just showed some rotator cuff degeneration. It was kind of generic, didn't really give any kind of clear direction as to why she was having so much difficulty. Her treatment option um, that she was told from a previous doctor was that she needed a total shoulder replacement. So again, this woman is 56, very active. That wasn't really on her top list of things that she wanted to do, right? So she came to see us. This is her motion x-ray that we did in the office. So again, here's the shoulder, here's that uh, ball and socket. I keep saying ball and socket, it's really kind of like a golf ball on a tee. So you can imagine like you give a golf ball on a tee, if the stabilizers that should hold that ball on the tee are loose, like it's just gonna fall right off, right? So in this motion x-ray, we are looking as she moves her shoulder in this internal rotation and you can see how far that shoulder dips down, okay? Like you see how this ball is kind of right here off the socket and she has this big gap between uh, the, the humeral head and her acromion. Okay, that's part of the shoulder blade. There's an interval, it's called the acromial humeral interval. And a lot of times um, on x-ray, people will use it to see, like let's say somebody has a complete rotator cuff tear and that ball has kind of hiked up more towards the acromion, like they'd have a reduced space. I use it more to see how unstable the joint is, like how wide, how big is that interval. And on this patient, it was, let's say 19 millimeters. Eight to 12 is considered normal. Anything more than 12 is considered unstable. Anything over 13, 14, we're like concerned that that joint is actually subluxing or it's slightly coming out of place during that, mo during that motion. Um, so very unstable shoulder in this patient. This is actually just showing what it was at rest. So here's the space here, let's say, 6.75, almost seven millimeters, all the way now to 19. Big difference in how much that space is opening up because that golf ball is just kind of starting to roll right off that tee. Some interesting points about this case, dynamic imaging is very useful in helping to diagnose patients with chronic pain or even you know chronic subluxations, unstable shoulders, because it confirms, yes, the shoulder's unstable, or no, it's not, or if it is unstable, how unstable is it? You know, would we consider it mild, moderate, severe? And that helps us to determine an appropriate treatment plan for this patient. I mean, you would imagine like somebody with a mild instability is not gonna need as many prolotherapy treatments tighten their ligaments as somebody with a severe instability. Because of how unstable her shoulder was, I said, yes, prolotherapy is indicated to tighten these ligaments. I did not say you need a shoulder replacement right away. At this point, she doesn't have like this severe arthritis, terrible bone spurs, her motion is so limited because she has all this bony overgrowth. I mean, those are usually patients that I would send for a shoulder replacement. You know, it's too far gone. In her case, I did think that her outlook was very promising with prolotherapy. And after one treatment, she said that her shoulder did not fall out of place, ironically, until the one day when she was driving to our office. We actually got to put it back in place for her, which was really exciting because we don't get to do that very often. But she had had so much more stability even after one treatment. 
And what we did with her was um, we did dextrose prolotherapy and we also did stem cells from bone marrow aspirate. She had done well with that in the past on previous treatments and because it was so unstable, we actually jumped right to that for her and she did very well. Another point I wanna reiterate is that other options exist for people who have been told they need a total joint replacement. Of course, there are times where I send people for replacements because that's what they need to help them increase their function, reduce their pain, and, and live their best life, as I say. But for other patients, you know, other options such as prolotherapy do exist to help them.